Uh, I'm absolutely delighted. Well, thank you so much, Phil, for that lovely introduction. And I'm absolutely delighted to be here. I'm just going to share my screen, if that's okay, and then I'll give a little bit of a an introduction. Um, so I've watched quite a few of these um, webinars, and it's really it's a real honour, generally, to to be here to speak with you. Um, I'm going to be speaking hopefully for about 30 minutes, and then we'll have plenty of time for questions, and there will be uh, interactive elements as well within the uh, session. I've got the chat open uh, on my second screen, so if you want to write anything in the chat or if you want to tweet during the session, you're more than welcome to do so. Um, uh, so as um, Phil has said, this session is looking at inclusivity and accessibility. Um, I'd have to say, first of all, I put my hands up. I'm not an SEN specialist. But what I am uh, is a big fan of EdTech and those people that uh, have seen my YouTube channel, have been following me on various things over the years, blogs and tweets and what have you, then you'll you'll know that my YouTube channel, by the way, is um, just uh, at Joe Dale. So recently you were able to um, sign up and get your own username on YouTube. So if you just do a search for at Joe Dale, you should find it. Or if that doesn't work, put in Joe Dale 100, which was the original name of the uh, the channel. And it's got hours and hours and hours and hours of uh, free professional development. So my background is I was a French teacher for 13 years. I taught um, French at secondary school level for three years and then 10 years at middle school level, uh, nine to 13 year olds um, on the Isle of Wight, which is where I am right now, which you wouldn't know because of my my background, but more of that later. And um, for the last 13 years, I've been an independent languages consultant and I've traveled all over the world, um, I've gone to places like Australia, North America, uh, all over Europe, uh, the Middle East, South America, etc. But as a result of the pandemic and because of Brexit, changed my model. Can I ask everyone to mute their microphones as well, please? It's very distracting if I can hear background sound. So please mute all your microphones. Thank you. Um, as I was saying, um, as a result of the pandemic and because of Brexit, I've now mostly pivoted to doing um, online uh, training, uh, particularly around ChatGPT at the moment, um, although I am doing face-to-face -face training in places like uh, Dublin as well. I've been going regularly there for Erasmus Plus funded courses. My Twitter is on the screen, as you can see. I've now got uh, 34,800 followers. Uh, feel free to follow me if you'd like to. My email address is joedell.talk21.com as well. Um, I'm going to share the whole presentation with you and um, thank you to uh, the tel for Telsig for um, publishing, sharing the resources um, on the website uh, later as well. That's very much appreciated. So let's make a start. This is what we're going to try and cover in the in the 30 minutes. So there is a lot of information there. As you can see, I'm going to be starting off um, by looking at Immersive Reader, which if you don't know, becomes bundled with uh, Microsoft tools like Microsoft Word, PowerPoint, uh, Class Notebook, um, it also comes with other tools. It, it, it's also bundled with other tools like Wakelet as well, or um, Flip, which is also a Microsoft tool actually. And um, Reading Coach is a really exciting new feature of Immersive Reader, um, which I'm going to demonstrate live, so no pressure. I'm then going to show you how you can use um, a tool to uh, essentially OCR uh, an image with text in it, uh, so you can then grab the image text and it turns it into an editable text, which is I think really good for. Uh, accessibility. I'm then going to show you an idea around voice typing um, using Google Docs, but you can do the same in, in Microsoft Tools. Um, I'm going to show you how you can make closed captions really, really easily. Uh, we have got closed captions available today, so if you want to turn those on, then feel free to do so. And then um, sort of round up with uh, some further uh, ideas, further resources that you can then check out as well. So before we start, I wanted to do a few uh, questions and to do that I'm using a tool called QuerryPod. Can let, anyone let me know in the chat if you've heard of QuerryPod just out of interest. Um, it's a little bit like Mentimeter uh, meets PowerPoint but it is, it's one of these AI tools and you can put in your prompt which is like about you know it could be say a few words and it will then generate a PowerPoint like presentation with interactive elements which you can then customize and change. So to begin with Bear with me. This is the first time I've ever done this in a webinar, but it should be fine. As you can see, um, I've got a question coming up saying, what are some of the barriers that prevent language learning programs from being accessible accessible to all learners? So what I'd like us to do is, can you see here a little um, icon here with a zero next to it? If I click on that, then you should be able to join, hopefully. If you click on um, join at in 
give me like a copy and paste this into the chat. There we are. So if you just click on that link, you'll be able to uh, come up straight away. Uh, as you can see, I'm going to do the eye. There we are. So you can see you put in your actual name and then you'll give him like a nickname. Um, Joe, just, um, just to interrupt here, you've got a you've got a music blaring out over what you're trying to say from the me, from the computer. Let me, let me so that comes Perfect. with Freepod, but I will mute that. Fair enough. That's not good for accessibility, is it? So <laughs> I will I will do that. So as you can see uh, on the screen, um, we've got various people. We've got Crazy Pasta, Eating Walk, Thriving Pizza, etc. So that's obviously not your real names, but you know what your real names are on the screen. And so the next thing that I would then do. Um, is press the play button. You'll have, then have two minutes to answer your uh, question, okay? So uh, I, that's a good point about the music. I will make sure when I use this again, I will mute the music. Okay, so are we all ready for me to start? Are we all in and ready to go? Let's just go for it, okay. So there we are. And then uh, from there, as you see, I'm then gonna press play again, and then you'll get the countdown, and then you'll be able to start writing your answers. So here we go. Okay, so you've now got two minutes to write in your thoughts on this question. What are some of the barriers that prevent language learning programs from being accessible to all learners? Okay. And once that comes up, so it's very similar to Mentimeter in that way. I can see I've already got a couple of responses so far, which is great. And I'll just give you the full two minutes to do this. Okay, so we've got 10 replies so far. That's great. If I click on this little icon there, then this little uh, extra box comes up, as you can see, and you've actually got this open moderation option, um, which if I click on that, then I can actually see the different answers that are coming in, which I know I'm showing my screen right now, so you'll be able to see these. But I could have this presumably on a second screen. I could move this away onto a second screen, and then only I would be able to see that, as it were. Um, so another 30 seconds. Keep your answers coming in. And then when we're ready, I'll press the stop icon there. So we've got 27 people in the room, uh, which is fantastic. Not long to go now. Then you get a lovely little countdown, 10 seconds to go. Okay, perfect. Right. So we've got 21 answers. And then all I have to do now is uh, if I click uh, here. Oh, sorry. Hang on. That's right. And then, no, that's not right. Hang on. Stop it there. And then I just need to, to show the answers. Uh, there we are. There we are. Okay, so um, so you've got, for example, some different uh, ideas that come in. This is not right, is it? Hang on, let me just carry on. As I said, it's the first time I've been uh, using this tool, so I'm still getting used to how it all works. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come out now. Stop it there. There we are. And then, hang on, let's go back to the... Sorry about this. Hang on. Let me just um, exit, and then I'll be able to see the results. So that's, that's fine. Let's click End. I go here, and then the results... Uh, let me just click present again. Okay, I do apologize. Um, I thought that was going to be much slicker. When I tried this out um, personally, it was it was fine. 
Let me just go back a sec. If we go to my results, you get no results. So let's hang on. My results should all be here. There we are. Here we are. So if I go here, there we are. Okay. So these are all the uh, the responses. Few we did get there. Sorry about that. Um, so as you can see, um, we've got um, a few here. I can then click on the different numbers here. So let's just look at some of the the ideas. So some of the reasons that you've given um, is uh, screen readability, technical know-how, lack of knowledge about availability, lack of training, uh, ADHD, autism, mental health issues, dyslexia, dyspraxia, absolutely. Poor excuse me, poor digital skills in teachers, busy visual layout. Uh, yeah, using graphics to represent text, et cetera, et cetera. I'll just go on to the next one. Uh, ease of use or lack of. I think that um, these sorts of features I'm going to be showing have become easier and easier to use, um, definitely. So the ideas have been around for a long time, but I think that um, uh, popular tools are now um, uh, embedding them and making them su super simple to, to use. Uh, price, ease of access, even knowing about them. Yeah, so all the things I'm going to be showing you today are free, apart from the fact that obviously with the Microsoft, um, um, Microsoft Word, you would have to have a subscription. Uh, which is obviously not free unless, well, if you work in an institution, probably you're going to have that, have that for uh, for free, uh, certainly if, if it's a secondary school. Okay, so there's a few answers there. Thank you so much for everyone uh, for putting your answers in. That's wonderful. Um, in relation to enlarging my screen, I mean, I can't actually, because I'm in um, just in Chrome now, it's not, um, it's not possible for, for me to do that. So um, what you'd have to do is you'd have to say, um, well, if I could obviously do this sort of thing, I could do that sort of thing within Chrome, if that's what you mean. Um, but I can then just click reset. Okay, so I think what I'm going to do now, thank you so much for your, your questions at the beginning. That's great. Your answers, should I say. And I think now we're going to carry on because there's a lot of content that I want to cover. If you're interested in finding out more about Curiopod, I should watch this back myself. Um, I actually uh, presented, hosted a webinar with uh, Eirik from uh, Norway, who is one of the co-founders of uh, CuriePod, which you'll be able to check out. So you have got a free tier with CuriePod. You can make, I think it's five presentation that um, you can uh, um, you can uh, access. And then if you want more features, then there's a premium version as well. Um, and I do hear what you're saying about the readability, absolutely. And uh, I think that for the rest of the presentation, that should be absolutely fine. It just so happens that the text just appears naturally quite small, but you could use the um, control and then the mouse wheel um, on a keyboard to make the text bigger, which is um, a built-in feature of Chrome, which is great. Um, um, I, 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 I obviously could put the link in the chat. I just want to carry on right now. Uh, if someone wants to do this, it's just on my YouTube channel, but obviously I just want to present and you're going to get all the content later. Okay. Just from the point of view of the flow of the presentation. Okay. Right. Let's, um, let's carry on. So the first thing I'm going to be looking at uh, today is uh, this Chrome extension called user immersive reader on websites, which you can access here. If you just go to the Chrome web store, you'll be able to access it really easily and simply. And just to show you how it works, I'm just going to go straight into um, a web page. I've gone to Le Monde, which looks like this, as you can see. So that's the title. And I'm just going to, this is literally from today. So I'm just going to highlight some of this text. Then I'm going to right click and I'm going to bring up uh, this option here, which says, help me read this. So this is because I have the, uh, the Chrome extension installed called Use Immersive Reader on website. So as I've said already, Immersive Reader comes bundled with Microsoft Word, et cetera. But there's also this Chrome extension, which is not an, an official Microsoft uh, product, but it works in exactly the same way. So you click on this right now. And then what happens is it will then bring up uh, your text. And what you can do is you can just simply press play. You don't have to select the language. It will just come up and recognize the language straight away. So by doing that, you can see what you think of the model of pronunciation. FACTUL, la situation hydrogéologique du pays s'est globalement améliorée, mais de nombreuses nappes continuent d'afficher un niveau plus faible que d'habitude. There we are. Okay, so you can see that it's a good model of pronunciation. I think compared to other tools like Natural Reader, for example, which is a bit more robotic, I think it sounds really good. Now you can change the uh, female to male voice selection if you want to. You can change the voice speed as well, so it sounds like this. Notamment dans le sud-est où les sols sont extrêmement secs. So still, I think it, that sounds fine. If you go down to really slow, it does sound as if the person's been uh, maybe having a couple of glasses of wine. 
sec. Météo France et le Bureau de Recherche Géologique et Minière. Okay, so uh, there we are. That's how that one works. Now, the question is, can you have other non-standard accents? No, it, it is what it is. So um, it just produces this sort of model pronunciation. Um, it, you can't, um, you don't have any control over choosing the, uh, the, the non-standard accents, as it were. But what you do have, which I think is particularly good about this tool compared to other similar tools, is up here, you have these three functions, which are amazing for languages. So let me show you why that is. If you click on the text preferences option, you can change the text size like that really easily. So for the person that was talking about the on Chrome, about the text size, you've got full control over the text size here. You can uh, change the spacing if you want to. So for dyslexic readers, they should find it easier. Or some dyslexic readers should find it easier if um, there's more spacing between the lines. You can change the font, although you're only limited to three fonts. You can change the background color as well, and you can click on more colors if you want to. So if you want to have a yellow background or a blue background or uh, green, etc., I think that's a really nice feature. Um, so that's the first uh, option, the text preferences. If you then go to grammar options, um, you can turn on all the different uh, parts of speech like this. So they're color coded uh, and you can also enable the labeling. So it means that, for example, all the nouns have got N above them and they are um, colored in purple. All the adjectives have got ADJ above them and they are in green, et cetera, et cetera. And then you can even enable the syllables as well. So that could help with pronunciation as well as general um, accessibility and raising uh, grammar awareness. I think that's uh, really fantastic. Um, so I can see that um, we've got a fan of the word category uh, feature. That's great. And then if you click on the reading preferences here, then you can have what's called line focus. So again, this is great for dyslexic readers who might find that if they look at the whole text, it's sort of swimming on the page, as it were, um, and they uh, they might find it difficult to 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 read. They might find the letters are literally sort of jumping around in front of them. But by having this line focus, or in the old days uh, when we used to use just a ruler on the on the page and move the ruler down line by line, then um, that uh, that this is like the digital equivalent of doing that. Um, you can also have three lines at a time if you want to, or have no line focus at all like that. You've got a picture dictionary as well, um, which because this uh, is quite a sort of a, a more high level text, as it were, it might be a bit more tricky to show how this works, but let's have a go. Okay, so I'm going to click on certain words. There we are. I've clicked on this word, for example, and you can see that it's come up with a picture. Uh, let me see if I can do other ones here. There we are. I don't think it means um, tablecloth here, so it can give you uh, the wrong meaning as it were but for simpler uh, words um uh, then it will yeah it should definitely help um but it's not as you can see it's not available for, for everything but um it does give you a pronunciation model as well like this Minister. there we are okay and situation okay and then if you click here as well, you've also got the option to translate. So if you translate this, for example, if I choose, let's say, English. Like this. OK. And if I just do it by word, not by document, then what I could then do is click on individual words. And I've got the, the French and the English. De. Two. OK. Or something more challenging. Hydrologique. Hydrological. Okay, so again, it's giving the the um, uh, the pronunciation according to the, um, uh, the the language, the country where the uh, that would be pronounced um, with a, an authentic accent, a pretty authentic accent, and I think it does a great job. If you want to translate the whole document, then you just do that, and you've got the whole thing in English, as it were. Okay, so that's how um, immersive user immersive reader on websites works. But now I'm going to show you how you can do the similar a similar thing in. Uh, in Word, which gives you this reading coach option. Now, I'm going to copy this text, and I could put it straight into Word, but I thought what I would do instead is put it into ChatGPT instead and make it a bit simpler, maybe. Okay, so let me put this in right now. So could you summarize this text in French at A1 level? So you can put in uh, the CEFR uh, levels and it should recognize it. I'm going to paste the text in now. 
and then see what it comes up with. So there we are. That's still quite high level. So I could then ask it to change it again. Okay. And I've got this voice um, tool here called voice control for ChatGPT. So I could do this with my voice like this. Could you make this text much more simple, please, in French? Okay. Okay, let's go with that now. Okay, so I've got my text here. I'm going to copy that like that. And I'm going to go into Word, which I've got here. And then I'm going to paste it in like that. And then I'm going to go to the uh, View menu and click Immersive Reader. Okay. So then you'll see it looks exactly the same as before. We don't need these tips here. Let's get rid of those. Okay, and you can see it looks exactly the same. So I can press play. Vous pouvez partager un article en utilisant etc. But what I can also do here is if I go to uh, the reading preferences, you've got this new feature called Reading Coach, which is only available in um, in a Microsoft tool. Um, so for example, you've got this in Word, you've got it in um, Microsoft Lens, which is a really nice uh, OCR scanner tool. Um, and you'll see at the moment, you've got the play button here. If I click on this, then it's now turned into a microphone. So now what I can do is click that microphone. And then I've got this uh, this little window coming up. And now I'm going to try and test my French. Here we go. So, vous pouvez partager un article. No, hang on. Let me just check it. Oh, there we are. Okay. Vous pouvez partager un article en utilisant les icônes de partage en haut à droite. Il est interdit de copier un article sur la permission écrite du monde. For plus d'informations, consultez notre... See, this is not actually... The, this is the wrong text. Never mind. Let me just stop here. Let me just see what it says <laughs> on accuracy. So it's saying 80% accuracy, uh, time spent reading, etc. So it, uh, what's happened here is I've copied it and it didn't like that. So uh, normally that wouldn't happen, but that's okay. I can still read this text anyway. So now it's going to tell me which... These words, words were the most challenging for you. Okay. Now I Select to... any word to tackle them again. Okay, so now I need to um, test myself saying these words like this. When you're ready, press the microphone and read the word out loud. Vous. Your effort is showing. Great reading. Phew, that's good. Okay, and then I click the arrow. Son. Great reading today. Okay. <laughs> you there we are. Okay, so in other words, what you can do is you can... Um, read the text. Obviously, by copy and pasting from Le Monde, it didn't like that. But in general, you can uh, copy any sort of text from, say, um, uh, ChatGPT, etc., or from the web into Word. And then you can then run Immersive Reader and you've got this new reading coach feature, which gives you a number of different words to practice. It's normally five. I've never seen it having two before. And you can then practice your pronunciation in that way. So um, there we are. That's how that one works. And if I go back to here, and carry on sharing if i just move that out of the way a bit there we are that's easier and then slideshow and then you've also got this chrome audio capture option which um, allows you to do the following if i were to go back to here there we are and just take this text like this for example and right click help me read this like that and then i could use this tool here called audio chrome capture and we'll just wait for this to come up. Okay, there we are. And then I could click record, start capture, press play. FACTUL, la situation hydrogéologique du pays s'est globalement améliorée, mais de nombreuses nappes continuent d'afficher un niveau plus faible que d'habitude, notamment dans le sud-est, où les sols sont extrêmement secs. Okay, I'm not sure why that voice changed a little bit then, but there we are. Then I can click save capture. Save capture, and that's now captured that as an MP3 file, which I could then play and listen back to it. So you could, obviously, respecting copyright, um, get a uh, an audio capture from uh, immersive reader if you wanted to make use that model of pronunciation and use it in other contexts. Okay, so grab image text. This one's super simple. All you have to do is uh, this is the uh, the tool called PhotoScan. You're going to get all the links in the in the uh, in the, the website later. But all I have to do is, let's say I go to here and I want to go back to the original text like this, and I want to take a screenshot of this. I could do this in different ways. I could use a tool like Snip and Sketch, 
which comes bundled with Windows. I can click New like this, and I can now just drag over the page like that. Okay, it comes up like that. It's all automatically copied that image to my clipboard, and then PhotoScan looks like this. So I launch that, I click from clipboard, and then you can see it's grabbed that text. And then from there, I can then copy that text like this, and then I can paste it wherever I want to paste it. So this is now editable. So I could then change that around, et cetera, et cetera. So that's called photo scan. You can do something similar in Google Keep. Um, and I'm going to give you a video um, of a presentation I did, which shows you how to do that a bit later on. Okay. So that's how you use photo scan. So from the point of view of grabbing text from an image, it works really well. Also with um, uh, Google Keep, you can grab handwriting, whereas it doesn't uh, accept handwriting in photo scan. Voice typing is another really easy tool to use. I'll just show you this one live. So I'm going to open up a new Google Doc. To do that, you can put in docs.new, which if you don't know, is a, is a, a easy shortcut for creating a Google Doc. So docs.new, slides.new, sheets.new are ways of making brand new um, uh, copies of a new uh, document or sheet or slideshow. So now um, in uh, docs, I go tools and voice typing, and then I can do the following. This is at the moment is in, in English. Okay, so it's really easy to use voice typing in Google Docs. You can just choose the language and then use your voice to dictate straight into the Google Doc. Okay, and then I can then change the language to say French. It's, I always find it interesting that you have all these different Spanishes and then you've just got French. That's it. <laughs> okay. Alors, c'est vraiment facile de utiliser ce système avec Google Docs pour uh, 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 transformer votre voix en texte. Okay, I can see there's a there's a mistake there, so I'd have to obviously have to go in and change it, but you get the idea how easy it is to uh, turn your voice into written text in a range of languages. You can also do things like punctuation, like saying full stop, new line, comma, etc. But that's how voice typing works. Uh, I've got a little video here as well, which goes into more detail and how you can do things like uh, format the, the text, how you can change the background color and this sort of thing, uh, highlighting and what have you. So do daughter here. How the heck are you doing this fine? Here we are. Um, I want to do this one live. That's okay. This is a closed captioning in PowerPoint. So I've got PowerPoint open up here. There we are. And you go to, uh, let's just refresh the page like this. And then in the slideshow menu, you click here and you go always use subtitles. You go spoken language. So, for example, I could click English UK, and then you could choose subtitle language, and I could go to say French, and then I could then run the slideshow like this, and then I click this little icon here, and now I can be speaking in English, and my voice can be turned into closed captioning in French like this. So that's really cool, I think. Okay, I can then stop by clicking here. Okay. And I could go to here, for example, and I could go to down to here and I could have Ukrainian and I could then run it again and run it here. And now I could be speaking in English, but my ca closed captions could be in Ukrainian. So when I've been going to Dublin, as I said earlier, and I've been able to show lots of uh, uh, the teachers there from all over Europe that they can have this feature in PowerPoint. They got very excited because lots of them are accepting Ukrainian students into their schools. And what a great way of um, helping them and giving them more uh, access to the to the results, the, uh, the resources that you're sharing with them. OK, right. So that's how that one works. And then I wanted to try and do this live, if that's OK. So if I click um, here and I click anyone and I click present live like this, then we should get a little page coming up. There we are. And I click the um, copy here, put this in the in the chat. And then what I'd like you to do, please, is either click on that link or scan the QR code. And then I will then start talking and you should be able to choose the language yourself on how um, the subtitles appear, the closed captionings appear. So let's see if it works. I'm going to do this on my iPad as well. And you can see at the bottom here, um, it will say probably English. But if you tap on that, you've got a whole range of languages. So I'm going to choose French right now. And now all my um, my my closed captions are now turning into French. Could you let me know if that's working for you? It'd be interesting to, to know. I can also click here where it says show slides. There we are. Um, so you could have a whole presentation running and it's up to you 
um, to independently choose which language you have the closed captions in. Be lovely to know if that's working, if you could let me know. Yeah, so Michelle, it's working for you. That's great. So I think, again, this could be really useful um, as an option. French is definitely there because I've got it working on mine. So I'll just give you another couple of seconds. So again, you can see that for each um, person on their own device, they get access to um, the, the the choice of whichever language they would want. Um, so there we are. Cool. OK, because I'm, I'm aware of time, I'm going to stop that now. And But thank you. I'm going to click end session. And then go back to here. OK, and. Because I'm very aware of time, I think I've, I've skipped through maybe um, some other ideas. So um, I've also got book creator here. That's really easy to uh, record subtitles um, in your your video. You've also got the dictation option um, as well in book creator, which um, uh, is also very useful. I don't know, Phil, have I got time to to demonstrate this? I'm just aware that we started maybe a little bit late and I've I've it's I've had a few hiccups, let's say. Yeah, uh, no, no, please, please finish. And uh, okay? so yeah, we've got time for questions still. Okay, yeah, no problem. So I will then go to book creator, which I've got here and you, I'll click on new book and I'll click, say here, portrait like that. So you've got your book. Um, you can make uh, up to 40 books for free in a free library. If you want more than that, you then you have to pay. So just let me show you how this works. If I click the uh, the plus icon and I click um, on the, in fact, I'm going to just mute my video in Zoom. Otherwise, it won't work. I'll get an error message. So I'm going to just mute my video. There we are. And then when I click camera, it says record video. Otherwise, it wouldn't work. So let me show you how this works right now. Okay, so adding subtitles in Book Creator is really easy. Look, here they are. Okay, then I click use video. Video then appears like this like that. I wait for it to uh, render. And then once it's finished rendering, I put to my video back on actually, once it's finished rendering, then off, oh, I just have to, I don't know if you can hear that my phone's ringing, I'm just going to let it ring, because um, uh, the microphone shouldn't pick it up, I believe. So if I now click on here, you can see it says add captions. So I click add captions. And then I can choose the language like that and then click Generate Automatically. OK, and it takes about a minute for the captions to generate, and then you'll see that they'll appear underneath beautifully with the video. OK, so it does take a little bit of time for this to happen, but once it's done, then there we are. Can you see? So I can, all I have to do is just I can um, change the uh, the text if there's any typos. It normally does a good job apart from proper nouns. Um, so I could then put the full stop here. And as I said, this does work in a range of languages like that. And then I just uh, press done. And if I then press preview and play. Adding subtitles in Book Creator is really easy. Look, here they are. OK, so that's really cool. And you can do something similar with um, with audio. If you click the plus icon here and then record. Here we go. So start recording. Creating a transcript for your audio in Book Creator is easy as well. OK, use recording. Select it. Resize it if you want to, then click the eye icon, oh, creating a press the eye icon, and then uh, you click here which says add transcript. Okay. And then again, you can choose the language like that, click generate automatically, and then within a few seconds, it will uh, create a transcript. Um, the way that you know a transcript is there is because there's a, there's a little icon which looks like a Google Doc icon um, that appears on the actual loudspeaker icon. So that will appear in a second. There we are. I click, uh, I just make sure that's OK. Again, I could put in uh, capital B for book and capital C for creator um, and click done. And there it is. So you see what I mean? You've got this little icon there. And if I then press play and press here, I've got my transcript there. And then another thing you can do is you can click the plus icon and you can click on record. And no, sorry. You don't, that's not what I mean. You click the plus icon and you click text. 
And then here, you've got a microphone. Now, if you click on the microphone, it will then, um, a little drop down menu of all the languages will appear here. You choose the language, you speak in that language like this. Alors maintenant, je vais parler en français et comme vous voyez, ça marche et le texte apparaît devant nous. Parfait. That's really nice as well. I click done and then I've got my text dictated straight into Book Creator. Okay, so that's how that one works. And then we're sort of rounding up now. Um, there we are. If I click go on to the next one, uh, this is a little creative thing that I've done, um, which is you, you can um, add in audio and you can uh, make it invisible, which is very cool. And you can also um, take uh, an image and then remove the background. I think I'm just going to show this live just very quickly. Uh, do bear with me um, and you'll be able to watch the recording if you have to leave a bit earlier. OK, so in Book Creator, we'll go back to here and I'll go to this page here. I go to the plus icon, go to images, and then I can search for image such as cafe. Like that. This will now come up. I'm going to find this image here and click add. Uh, so this is from Pixabay, so it's a copyright free image. I then go to another website, which also has copyright free images called photosforclass.com. Like this, and then I put in a word like man and click find photos. OK, I'm going to choose this one. Click download and download that image. I then go to another website called remove.bg, which uses AI. And I can now drag that image onto the page like that. It will automatically remove the background like this. And I click download, save, go back to book creator. And I can literally just drag and drop the gentleman into the cafe. And it looks like he's actually there. So this is really good from a creativity point of view, I think. And then the uh, the audio option I was just talking about would be plus icon shapes. Uh, you could have a thinking bubble here like that. And then you could uh, click here, shapes, speaking bubble like that. And then you could imagine what the man could be thinking. So you could be thinking, for example, I wonder when my coffee will be ready. And then you could then Click here, click the eye icon, make the text bigger, text settings to say there. And then here you could say coffee coming up. I'm just doing a really simple English example. Obviously, I could do this in the target language if I wanted to. Uh, click the eye icon, text settings. Uh, I think the text size was 26. So I'll leave it like that. Then plus record, and then we record our audio. Here we go. So I wonder when my coffee will be ready. Okay, use recording, there's the audio. And then the killer feature here is you click I and you click here, it says invisible when reading, like that, okay? And then here, you can then do the same thing, plus record and the next one, here we go. So coffee coming up, okay, use recording. So this is a great way of making your own personalized narrated photo stories. Um, coffee, there we are, and making them invisible which means that you can then press play. There we are. I wonder when my coffee will be ready. Coffee coming up. Okay. And you've also got the read to me function, which I can click here. I wonder when my coffee will be ready. I wonder when my coffee will be ready. Coffee coming up. Coffee coming up. Okay. That's because what I've done here, I need to change the language. It's trying to read it in French when it, obviously it's not in French, but you get the idea. So that read to me is another really nice accessibility feature as well. Um, I know I did that quite quickly, but you'll be able to watch the recording back to see the exact steps. And then this is a little book here by Book Creator, which is all around um, supporting language learners, which you can have a look at as well. And all the links are here as well in the presentation. Um, if you want to have a longer version of this, this is um, a version I did that's about an hour and 10 minutes, which goes through everything I've gone through already, plus lots of other ideas as well. Do have a look at that one if you're interested. If you're interested in uh, considering asking me to uh, come to your uh, institution or do a, an online uh, training session. Here are some example sessions I could offer. And uh, particularly this at the moment, I've been running a four part webinar series around ChatGPT. Um, I've done three sessions so far. I've got one more to go on the 25th of May and I'm running it again in June. And I'm going to announce the dates about that soon. And we've had over 130 people registered from all over the world, which has been amazing. So do have a look at that if you're interested. And that's the presentation. So I, I apologize for going slightly over. And I know that my uh, 
Curie pod skills need to be improved. So please bear with me. But um, thank you ever so much for listening and coming along. And I really hope that you found that useful. And I'm going to stop showing my screen right now. And then we can have some questions. I can see. Brilliant. You. Thank you, Joe. That's all right. Sorry. That's yeah, go on. Really amazing. Really cool. Um, right. I'm just going to um, put your hand over to the question side of things. I am just going to stop the recording and we're going to be saying goodbye to our um, um, audience on YouTube. So farewell to you.